It's a cold, cold day today. It was probably minus four somewhere last night. Don't know why it's so cold. Um, but I'm going to just show you around some of the things I've done. Um, so this is in the staircase, as you can see. Because I'm insulating this wall, this is going to be a very cold wall. But because I'm insulating this wall and I need to screw the banister back in at some point, I've had to build out these blocks to, to meet the plasterboard uh, because I also got nothing to screw into. Um, and it's really annoying because it's obviously different heights and different things and all the walls slope at a weird angle. Um, this one's actually quite straightforward. So those blocks are in. Did a bit of a deep clean, like hoovered everything. This is a very, very dusty room um, before we did this. So it's much nicer because the environment just feels cleaner and better. Um, there's only one channel to cut up here and that's where I bring the pipes in this corner from downstairs. They've come along the hot water pipes into the bathroom floor, which still needs to be cemented, and then just through this little hallway to meet this radiator, which is gonna hang here. So basically we're in a quite a good position. Um, yeah, it feels like massive progress. So today my plan is to start the end of the really dirty work, uh, or the dusty, crazy dusty work. Um, so I'm gonna get the big angle grinder, and in this room, the fire is here. This is where the fire half is, coming up the chimney here. Uh, and on the other side of the room, there's gonna be a big radiator. Uh, it's the only real place I can put it, it's the only place of space to put it, realistically. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, now the heating goes under the floor from the fire to the pump which I'll house downstairs. Then it will run under the floor and up the other side of the house. But I want to bring up a branch and bring it all the way across the room to this wall. So full width of the house, I'm going to need to cut a channel. Uh, the channel is going to have to hold my pipes and the little brackets that will sit in probably put some brackets in just to keep it secure. Uh, and yeah, so it's gonna have to be a channel like this, by this, and I'm gonna have to put it all the way through. So it's gonna get super dusty. Uh, but once that channel's cut, and a small channel upstairs, that's almost, almost all the big dusty work. I also need to cut a channel to my big conduit above this door, because otherwise, there's actually no way to cut the conduit around. Uh, for my wiring, so that's going to be pretty healthy. They filled it with concrete, so it's going to be in the face. Um, yeah, so there's like three filthy channels to cut, and then I'm basically good. So where I want to cut is where I've got this board, so uh, I'm going to put in another jack. Let's take that one out. The reason I've got these jacks in is because Put one and a half ton of plasterboard on the beams above here on the floor, and it all moves and breathes with weight changes. Uh, I just don't really want like a drastic change after I've done it. So basically, gonna tap this in place, take the other one out, mark out my line, and it's gonna come right across the front of this unit. These are nice, heavy, duty ones. Uh, found some in a shed, some from my dad. Now I can mark out my lines and just get grinding. So I'm going to mark um, on the outside of the line, just using spray paint. Uh, and that will mean that I just cut within the spray paint lines and that should do a pretty good job of helping me know where to, where to cut. This is going to be the worst one because oh, it's above his face. Look at his glasses cleaned. I thought it was concrete, but it's just been plastic. So much easier. Yeah, that's 
pretty much better than I thought it'd be. Other section of this is concrete because I already cut through it for the conduit lines. As you can see this bit. I thought I thought it would be the same. Just been grinding in your face. Oh, that made me feel good. It's just like going through butter. Much, 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 much easier. So actually that's the main big grindy cutty bullshit things. Turns out I can actually just break this out by hand so I don't have to wait for my crew to come back. We're breaking it sideways. Kind of comes out quite easily. So right now I'm trying to work out uh, where I want this box, but also all my light rings because it's about time, very close to sort of starting to work out uh, all the conduit lines. Obviously that's quite straightforward, but I'm trying to work out for next week where all the wires are going, which direction I want the wires to be kind of going in, positive to negative. Uh, yeah, and then also, so this box here will have the wet sockets, so the kitchen ones, three kitchen ones, the fridge, uninterrupted oven line, um, and the same for like dishwasher. And then I'm also gonna need to kind of bring up uh, cables which will go to aircon. I think I could probably take it through that wall most easily. Just trying to work out all the bits and then I can start fixing the conduit in a bit more confidently. Today I am gonna chisel out the rest of this channel, finish off, and I've got my drill back. Uh, and then I'm gonna do some more framing for the wall boxes and work out if I've got all the parts I need to do my plumbing. I am already realizing I have to order some more, which is gonna be a nuisance because coronavirus has shut down most stuff. try and start working out my plumbing stuff. Um, so this is my pump, which will take the water out the back of my fire, the back boiler. And it's gonna come down, in, and then what the pump will do, it will recirculate for a while to get the water to temperature. Uh, so it will pump it around here, and when it's ready, it will just send it out there, and this is the return. So basically it's got a cycle, and when it's hot, chucks out the other way. Um, and then it's gonna go out to, because this is 28 mil, so I'm gonna reduce it to 22 mil with these copper parts. Uh, and then at the 22 mil, I'm gonna have a couple of junctions, which will go along the floor, come back, and then yeah. So we just, just trying to work all this out. an update and as you can see my plants are doing really well I mean they definitely like that I talk with them every morning so look at my beans they are doing really well apart from those because these were supposed to be beans as well but they just decided to not wake up from their hibernation and so instead I planted some tomatoes but tomatoes are still sleeping too so anyways yeah more beans more peas uh, melons. I have a lot of plants, so I, I planted even like beetroot in the tiny, in, in the box, but now I read that actually I was supposed to plant it directly in the soil. So we'll see. We're gonna have some flowers and oh, you can see, I mean, it's not really the garden thing, but the roses are already blooming. Whoa. Some seeds I bought that are heritage seeds and I'm very excited for those because these are the seeds that not some sort of Monsanto made but the seeds that were kept from like hundreds of years ago from one generation to the other generation to the next generation then then to my generation this is I call him very optimistic bean because <laughs> I mean 
its head is here and it still grows yeah it has it has a giant root system but i don't think dude you will do anything this year but I, I i don't want to get rid of it i feel that he needs to understand like realize that maybe in his next life today our neighbors got us some soil and i got more seeds in my plants. There is a spaghetti and squash, um, cauliflower. We don't have any onions this year, so we're gonna plant some leeks, uh, sunflowers, some celery if we feel like we want to be very healthy, and some expensive asparagus. asparagus. Yeah, I cut some, tried to clean this area, and actually, when you clean the lemon balm, and then it grows like from the beginning, new and fresh. So now we are waiting for it to restart grow. It will be a really nice path to the garden. No one knows what's the name of this flower, and I don't know its name in English too, but in Lithuanian it's Aliva. And it's a funny one because I ate so much of it when I was a kid. Thing is, uh, I'll show you. So the blossoms have four, four leaves, see? And if you find the one that has five leaves, then you can make a wish and then you need to eat it. So yeah, I eat a lot of these flowers. <laughs> Nate will film me because I then put his uh, tools back to, the, back to the shed. But anyways, yeah, as we have some people here now, we have uh, compost, which will be very usable, I think. And I don't know, next autumn, maybe, hopefully. So I'm very excited. And then here you can see my first patch. And here are the peas from my grandma's garden. Oh, I tried to move this giant flower, don't know the name, and then I broke it. And then thanks to Ezra, I just fixed it with a duct tape. <laughs> a half garden. And from the last year, it is doing really, really well. I have some cocktail mint. I know actually that's the proper name, but that's the mint that you put in mojito. Lemon balm, my most favorite flower, maybe after Nasturtia though, Calendula. Mm. It's beautiful. It flowers like all the time. Either it's summer, spring, autumn, or even winter. And then like the time from last year, the, 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 the lavender, everything survived. I'm so, so psyched. And look at these beautiful sage blossoms. Really nice, really, really nice. Very psyched. Um, and then there's another patch that is already prepared for the, actually for the harvesting already. Yeah, a lot of lettuces. The biggest ones are self-seeded. So we already have some giant and actually almost edible radishes. Nate's most favorite herb, uh, cilantro. My favorite herb, dills. And then here's a rocket plant. No, 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 I'm very good on pizza. Look at this kale. I mean, obviously I'm not going to eat Maybe I could eat the scale. Ah, huh, that's quite good. Yeah, but I didn't. I, I've never seen a um, blossoms of kale or any other cabbages. It's actually really, really nice. And you can see them in the garden everywhere. They are super beautiful. So it's like I could get rid of it because I maybe want to plant something else, but I just can't. So beautiful. Last year I had a lot of imagination how this garden should look like, how I will plant some flowers here and some other flowers there. But this year is some sort of, I don't know, I came to this realization that it's, uh, it's pointless and I don't want to try to control everything in my garden. So I came with, the, with this idea to just try to appreciate as much as I can in my garden so not to kill all the weeds but just like to see the beauty in some weeds and some plants and um and just even if even if it's still to be bad herb maybe it's not bad maybe it's just you know our point of view which is not always really good so like here i really love this wall it's totally wild but i was standing and looking at it and it's so beautiful actually you don't need to do anything for it i mean you might want to clean it, but then when we will clean it, it will be just a plain rock. And now it looks so nice and wild and so natural. Here is my most precious thing. 
which my mom got from her garden. This is the sort of, we call it golden currants, but I'm, I'm not sure if it's the actual name. It's, it's not golden, it's actually black. But yeah, it was growing in my grandma's garden and it really reminds me of my grandma. I don't know, it's like sentimental, but I love it. I love you, I love you, grow, grow well, I love you. Yeah, so this is the um, garden update. I think the next garden update will be when some of my seedlings will go to the ground. Finish all the main conduit today. So back on wiring now. 